so there's a company, and this company began building an apartment complex in 2010. So in 2010, they began building an apartment complex. They had to rent construction equipment. So they had to rent bulldozers, for example. So they rented these bulldozers, and they paid $100,000 to rent the equipment. $100,000. They didn't pay it all at once. I'm going to show you how they made their payments. So they paid $100,000. Remember, they started this construction project. They started to build this apartment complex in 2010. They rented the equipment for $100,000. It's important to note that the contract that they had is for a five-year contract. You right, Clara? They had a five-year contract. In 2010, they paid $40,000. In 2011, they paid $30,000. In 2012, they paid $10,000. In 2013, they paid $10,000. And in 2014, they paid $10,000. How much is that total? <laughs> So they didn't pay the 100000 all at once. So we need to recognize that they're not going to be able to expense those costs. They need to capitalize them. So these are the payments that they made. You'd say, oh, so the question is, how much, how much, are they going to be able to capitalize on their 2014 return? So now you might think 10,000. But what we need to do is figure out how much they're going to capitalize. This is what they pay. That doesn't mean that that's the amount they're going to capitalize. So what we do is we take the $100,000, which is the amount of the contract, and we divide it by the number of years for the contract, which in this case is five years. So that's $20,000. So even though in 2014 they paid $10,000, that's how much they paid. That's cash that they paid. But we said we can't expense that because property transactions like we discussed here are subject to capitalization. We have to depreciate. We're not expensing these production costs per the Internal Revenue Code. We have to capitalize these um, expenditures. So in this particular case, I told you that the contract is five years. So either we're going to use the length of the contract to determine how much to capitalize for 2014, or I could have told you the useful life of the equipment. So if I told you that the bulldozers had a useful life of 10 years, then how much would we capitalize 
in 2014? $10,000. $10,000. But in this case, what I shared with you was that the contract that they had was for five years. So we'll use that to determine how much they're going to capitalize. Suppose I asked you how much would they expense in 2014? Well, as it relates to these particular costs, it would be zero. Because I just told you, you can't expense these costs. We have to capitalize them. So we're depreciating that, um, that rental equipment. That's what it says in the, in the tax code. So the rules of capitalization apply to the construction of this apartment complex, this property. So, uh, Professor, excuse me, what's so the, the, quick, um, the, the rule? If the, if the annual depreciation is, in this case, 20,000, uh, we cannot take uh, a amount less than this amount? Why would you want to take less than the 20,000? Yeah, you have said that they... So they paid 10000 yeah. What I'm telling you is that their cash out was 10000 but they're able to capitalize 20000 per year. Okay. Right. So what they should have been doing all along is taking 20000 each year. But right now we're focusing on 2014. All right, it happens that we have a store. And what our client decides to do is buy a parking lot next to the store. So what we need to think about is what's a capital asset and what's not a capital asset. So they buy this parking lot for $15,000. $15,000. It's just a lot. There's no building there, just an empty lot. Because what they think is that their store is not getting as much business because the potential customers have no place to park. So they think it's a good idea to buy this vacant lot so that their customers can park there. It costs them $15,000. In their store, also in 2014, they decide that they're going to put in these very fancy lighting fixtures. These lighting fixtures cost them $8,000. Because when you think about a retail experience, lighting is part of it. So flooring is something that's significant in a retail experience. Lighting is certainly something that's um, important. So they thought that spending $8,000 made sense. So the question is, how much of these assets are considered to be capital assets. <laughs> so what do we know? What do we know? We know that the lot is considered to be real property and the lighting fixtures is considered to be business property and we know that Real property and business property are not capital assets. So the amount of assets that are not considered capital assets is So real property and business property are not capital assets. The lot is real property. The lighting fixtures is business property.
right, let's look at, let's talk about capital gain net income. This is still in study unit 14 regarding property transactions. So this involves a computation. So what we're trying to compute is the capital is the capital gain net income so this is what we know we know that the long-term capital loss in this scenario is three thousand dollars Term capital gain is nine thousand dollars. term capital gain is 2000 long term capital loss 3000 long term capital gain 9,000 net short-term capital gain, 2,000. So we want to figure out the capital gain net income. So to do that, we have to find out <coughs> the net long-term capital gain. So the net long-term capital gain, the net long-term capital gain Six, is 6,000. So the net term, long term capital gain is 6,000, which is the long term capital gain minus the long term capital loss. So we subtract the 3,000, the capital loss, the long term capital loss from the long term capital gain. We get 6,000. And from that, we subtract the net short term capital gain. So to get the to get the capital gain net income, we have to add these two. So we add the net long-term capital gain to the net short-term capital gain, and we get eight thousand. That's the capital gain net income. You're going to see something like that on the exam. <coughs> All right, we still got a couple of more minutes before we go. Let's take this, uh, this example. 
All right, our client sold his home. Our client sold his home for $355,000. He has an adjusted basis of $75,000. $75,000. He purchased a new home for $200,000. So the question is, what is the gain that he must recognize? So he sold his home for $355,000. He bought the home for seventy-five thousand. So let's take that part first. What is? Slow down. Slow down. What happened? He said he purchased the home for two hundred and fifty. He sold the home for two hundred and fifty. Three hundred and fifty-five thousand. He sold the home, and then what happened? He said something about it. Right. And then how much did he buy? Two twenty-five. Well, that's the basis. Is the cost. Oh, okay, okay. What? it's not AGI, it's a basis. AGI? You said AGI. I said AGI? Yeah, I said basis. Basis, so the cost basis. The cost basis. So that's the cost, that's what he paid for the house. So the cost basis. Remember in the other example we talked about the basis? I said it's the cost basis. With the car, remember? I used that term basis, it's the cost basis. What he paid for it. So the basis, the cost basis is $75,000. So he sold the house for $355,000. Let's try this again. And he bought the house, right? The cost basis for the property is $75,000. So let's take this part by itself. What is, how much should he make on that deal? $280,000. So the question though is, how much of that is he going to have to pay taxes on? So we agree. He sold it for three fifty-five. dollars He bought it for seventy-five. dollars Not a bad deal. He made $280,000 on it. But the question is, of that $280,000, how much of that is he going to have to pay tax on? And the answer is... Was he there for more than two years? Okay. Yes, he lived there for more than two years. Okay. More than 24 months. Okay. 30, so he lived there for 15 years. Year 15, he sold the house for $355,000. So the first $250,000 is excluded. So 280 minus 250 is $30,000. So he only has to recognize the $30,000. If he was married, then $500,000 would be excluded. And if that was the case, then how much of the gain would he have to recognize? None, right? <laughs> All right, let's see if we can do one more. In twenty twelve, the company the company had revenues of $350,000. And they received the dividend, they received the dividend from a domestic corporation for $25,000. So they, all, they hold stock at another company and they received um, a dividend on that stock for $25,000. Now, what we want to talk about here is how much can a company deduct as a charitable donation? So this company donated $50,000.
their operating expenses are $100,000. So what we need to compute is the amount that they're able to deduct. So we know that the amount, the maximum amount they could deduct is limited to 10%, right? right? So let's figure that out. So their revenue is $350,000. They received dividend revenue of $25,000. Yes, we have to add in the dividend that they received. The dividend that they received, not that they paid, the dividend that they received from the company that they hold shares in. So they hold shares in another company. That company paid them a dividend of $25,000. Minus expenses? Yes, minus the operating expenses, which in this case... So they donated $50,000. How much are they going to be able to deduct? It's only 27,000. Wait, wait, so we, I heard somebody say 50,000. Somebody said 137,000. And... 10%. We're talking about, we're not talking about a personal tax return now we're talking about a corporate oh, tax return so we're talking about corporate taxable income he said it's 10 percent so the amount that they could deduct is twenty-seven thousand five hundred. So they can deduct. I didn't say that ten percent was the floor. They can deduct ten percent, right? Of what? You 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 thought? I think some of you are thinking that. Some of you are thinking that we're talking about a floor, like when we were figuring out the the um, components of Schedule A. This is not, um, that's why you're saying 50,000 minus 27,005. That means the first 27,005 is not deductible. No, it's the other way around. It's the, it's the 27,005, that's what we computed. So 10% of this is how much they can deduct. <coughs> That's the amount of their charitable donation that they can deduct. So we're talking about corporate taxable income now. This is in study unit 12. All right, I think that's what we could cover today. You guys are amazing. Good job. Good job. Fantabulous.